the other day I released a video, um, a Tough Topics uh, video that was talking about the coronavirus. And I think that uh, we need to look at a different aspect of that. Um, some churches are canceling services, some are not. And so uh, there's a lot of back and forth going on there. Now, we, I might look at, in the, again, in the future, the idea of canceling services apart from what's referred to as an epidemic or pandemic or whatever. Uh, but uh, I specifically want to look today, just real briefly, at the idea of should we cancel for coronavirus. Now, there's a few things. I, as I said in my last video, um, I really don't think that there's much to be afraid of with the coronavirus. It doesn't really seem like it's that big of a deal. Um, I'm not a professional, but I'm the statistics are, are what I'm looking at. So yes, I acknowledge that I'm not a doctor or a scientist or anything like that. But as far as we can tell from the coronavirus, there's really not much to be afraid of. It seems like people are just making a real big deal out of something that's really not a big deal. However, I have noticed that there are people on both sides um, trying to misuse scripture to validate their own opinion. So, you know, everybody has an opinion of what we should or shouldn't do, and then they jerk a, 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 script, a verse way out of context to try and imply something that's not going to happen. You know, um, some people are, well, well, Christians can't get sick if they have enough faith. And then other people are, just have no faith in anything. So there's a lot of that going on. And then there's a lot of um, pointless controversy where people are just... Um, uh, you know, judging each other and, and being hateful and mean and stuff, and you're stupid for being afraid, you're stupid for not being cautious, back and forth. And, you know, the thing is, is the coronavirus won't be here for forever. And so when it is gone, we will be left with um, the compassion we did or didn't show and the understanding we didn't did or didn't show and that. So, you know, remember that the, the choices you're making right now are, they are, they're going to extend um, past the coronavirus, and you really don't want to be someone who is kind of just kind of a jerk with anybody who doesn't agree with you. Now, I've made fun of the coronavirus. I think it's silly, absolutely, but I understand that there are people afraid. And, you know, I, I do want to say before I say anything that if I made you feel little like your opinion didn't matter. If you are concerned about the coronavirus, then I, I really am sorry. I, I didn't I didn't intend to do that, and I will I will try harder not to do that again. Um, however, um, so now that we've gotten all these things, if you're gonna cancel services, there's something you need to be aware of, and that is that there are people who are scared and in need of fellowship. Now, obviously, that, that brings up the thing, well, yeah, but if you meet and then somebody gets sick and then somebody dies, that's on you. I, I totally agree. Okay, I'm totally not arguing, not arguing at all. But if you're going to cancel services, you need to think of some way to give comfort to these people. That I mean, we as a church, if we're not reaching out, especially in times like this, what's the good of even having a church? Just so we can get together once a week and sing a song and make ourselves feel better about ourselves? God doesn't need our worship. Think about that. Sometimes we puff ourselves up. I go to church once a week or whatever. You know, I, I, that, that makes me somehow, you know, God's favorite and we have a special understanding. Whatever nonsense. Here's the thing. Our love to God is shown by our service to others. And if that's canceling services, okay. If that's not canceling services, fine. But there are people who are scared and in need of fellowship and we need to find some way. If it's not through services, if we're going to cancel, then we need to find some way to serve these people and, and to hit their needs. Okay, So there's a few verses to consider. Now, everybody's aware of the verses that are taken out of context. If you're not, Mike Winger actually had a video that he released yesterday um, that was talking about the misuse of Psalm 91. I don't necessarily agree with everything that was said, but I think that um, by and large, I mostly agree with things that he says. Um, if you are not aware of Mike Winger, um, check him out on, on YouTube. Um, he does live streams every week and does question and answers, um, looks at apologetics and difficult things and theology in the Bible. Uh, he's been walking through the Gospels. Uh, he had a fantastic video, actually a couple of videos, but one specifically that I saw where he talked about the Passion Translation. I highly recommend you to check it out. Um, he, he looks at a much broader uh, pool of things than I do. Um, and so anyways, 
uh, Deuteronomy 6.16. Um, but what I was saying was that that verse, in, um, there's a Psalm 91 that is being misquoted as, as how Christians should just have ultra faith in this time of coronavirus or whatever, and how that's being taken out of context, and I totally agree. And um, so this is, you know, he brought up the thing about how Jesus is being tempted by Satan. And Satan says, you know, takes actually that same Psalm 91 um, to try and get Jesus to jump off of a temple. And Jesus quotes this verse. It's found in Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse 16. It says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And it says, as you tested him at Massa. But um, that's not really the discussion for today, so that's why I cut off. Um that's absolutely true. You know, if you're going to go to services or if you're not going to go to services, just don't do not do something that's stupid and then say, oh, well, God has to, you know, cover my stupidity. Um, I'm not going to take any precautions. I'm not going to wash my hands, for instance, and then I'm just going to trust that I won't get any sickness. Let, let's, let's just stop for a second and think about this. Does anybody remember the Black Plague? Um, there's quite a large pool of people who believe that it was caused by... Um, well, the different processes that they <laughs> did to get rid of um, human waste and rats and those kinds of things. So um, if that view is correct, and that's what caused the Black Plague, then where was God during that? There were believers and non-believers dying. Did they all not have enough faith? There was no one who had enough faith? Or did was God just busy or... So you know I mean, if past is prologue, if we can learn from history, like... Most of uh, much of the Bible is history, where it shows us things and teaches us things. So if we can learn from the history, like the like Bible, the Bible itself shows us, then we can't say there will be no no physical problems, because either you're just disconnected from reality or God's a liar. You know, either way, there's not much help there. So with that being said, maybe it would be wise to think about what is the wisest thing to do. Okay, now now that I've said that, now let me take you to Proverbs 27, 12, which um, there are some things that you read in the Bible that you, th you just kind of skip past, and then all of a sudden it means something because of a situation. It's like, oh, okay. Proverbs 27, 12. Now, I do want to go out and say, as much as possible, I will be trying to... Um, have services at the church, if the very least live stream. Um, I'm going to strongly argue for that, unless things just really turn out to be really bad and I'm totally wrong. Um, in which case, you know, then we'll have to take different measures. But um, because here's the thing: if you if you feel like staying home, that, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to condemn you or anything like that. But if there are those who need I can't cancel a person in need, even if it's just one. And I know some people would say, well, that's really being stupid. I know, I know. But to see someone in need and not give them any alternatives is... Ooh. Proverbs 27, 12. The prudent sees danger and hides himself. But the simple, or the foolish, go on and suffer for it. So, in other words, let's say how this applies to coronavirus, for instance. Okay, well, let's say it really is this terrible virus, and, I mean, let's say three-fourths of the world's population is going to die. Just roll with me on this, okay? Uh, well, okay, so to see that and then say, I'm not going to take any precautions, and if I die, I die. Well, that's fine for you, but, I mean, like, for instance, me, I've got kids. I would be infecting my kids or dying and leaving my wife to take care of my kids without me. So, I mean, it's not just about me. It's about other people, too. And this is something that I really think that there is no easy answer to. And I think, personally, that we need to be in a lot more prayer and a lot less worry. Because I, I feel like there's going to be some people who it's right for them to not cancel services. And then I feel like there are other people who it's it's right for them to cancel services. I'm really trying to be open-minded about this. Um, and I understand there's people who are on both sides. And the thing is, as a pastor, you're 
purpose isn't to guilt trip people and to divide the community. Because let's let's say, let's say let's say here's a few things. Let's say half your congregation says no, we're not going to meet anymore. The other half says yes, we are. So you continue to to meet with the ones who do want to go, whatever, and and then the coronavirus, let's say, isn't a big deal, and it passes, and whatever. Well, now you've got two congregations, and you're going to have to rectify them somehow. You see what I'm saying? And there's this, there's this issue now. As much as we would like to just simply dismiss things, people don't think like that. Um, people remember a harm suffered in the midst of a trying situation for them. So whereas I'm not I'm not in the least bit concerned or worried at all about coronavirus. I understand that there are some who are. And those people still need love and care just like everybody else. And it'd be stupid to dismiss somebody else's concerns just because you don't share the same concerns. So first Timothy two, one through two, there are some people who who want who want the government to step in and try and stop them from having services just so that they can spite them. And I have to say, for a day or two, I kind of felt like this too. And I just don't see anything in the Bible that kind of validates that um, quarrelsome attitude is being a good thing. If, for instance, 1 Timothy um, chapter 2, verses 1-2, through 2, which I know is talking about something else, but there's a principle here that really does apply. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions. Okay, all right, but now this is the part. That we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. If we're just looking for uh, for something to come up to be rebellious about, do you think that that is following the same attitude as Paul is talking about in First Timothy? Or do you think that that might not be the best way to approach this? So I do want to say this. I, I think I've said all that needs to be said, and so I'm just going to kind of close up here. You are not less spiritual for trying to be wise. You're not. Not going to church doesn't make you unspiritual. It doesn't make you stupid. It doesn't make you. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not living by faith. It doesn't mean any of those things. Okay. But whatever you do, don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. And I, I had another video about Christians and Corona. Um, on the Tough Topics playlist, if you go to my page, um, that, that talks about this, um, about the coronavirus, why I don't think there's anything really to be afraid of, and I guess time will tell if I'm right or not. And um, and basically the idea of even if it is a scary thing, even if you get it, you know, it, I don't think that God intends for us to live in fear. Um, you know, Isaiah, I was reading Isaiah this morning. Isaiah chapter 8, and I really feel like this, this verse is very helpful. Um, and I'm not saying, once again, about taking precautions or not, but I think that this verse is just too um, applicable to, to ignore it. Cha chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11. For the Lord spoke thus to me with his strong hand upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of his people. Okay, all right. But now verse 12. Do not call conspiracy all that those people cause conspiracy. Right here. Do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. Now, now hold on. This is not saying canceling services or not canceling services. This is talking specifically about fear. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread, and he will become a sanctuary. And once again, I'm not saying that God will keep us safe from every sickness. <laughs> I'm saying that God can. I'm saying that God can bring healing. But once again, don't put God to the test. Don't be stupid. The the wise see uh, harm coming and the, and the, and the you know, Plan accordingly, but what I am saying this is: don't be fearful. Whatever, you, whatever you you do, don't do it because you are scared and shaking in your boots. You don't have to go to sleep with sleepless nights. You don't have to do that. There's a better way to live. Um, however, um, if you have elderly in your living in your house, um, or maybe people with autoimmune disorders or um, cancer or going undergoing treatments like that, um, things like that, maybe consider staying home, just like you would with the flu or the cold. Okay. Just, just like people do with the flu and the cold, maybe consider it because it doesn't, it doesn't prove that you're more spiritual by making one of your uh, household get sick and possibly die. I mean, yes, the the odds are very small. Yes, I understand that. However, 
I know that my kids would be heartbroken if grandma died. I know that they would be. And so I have to act not just from my own pride and ego. I have to act in such a way that's best for them and for their grandma. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. So for, for some, there are no symptoms. This is something to keep in mind. Just because you don't feel sick doesn't mean you aren't sick. And so all these things, just consider what's best. If it's canceling, then canceling. If it's not canceling, then not canceling. But whatever you do, do it for the motivation of serving others. Not for the motivation of fear, for the motivation of serving others. There are some pastors who will be living more by faith, by canceling their services, in hopes of serving even one, than other pastors who are condemning people who are not going to church and trying to play the whole fear tactics. I grew up in a very legalistic church. I say this all the time. And they always tried to use fear tactics, scare tactics. You know, uh, the book of Revelation was a nightmare. I remember... I remember as a kid going to sleep with panic attacks and developing all kinds of anxiety and stuff. And I have such a hard time as an adult at 28 years old reading the book of Revelation and Ezekiel and Daniel uh, because, of, because of the different things that have been taught um, in that fear-mongering. And just be careful how you address this because after the coronavirus is over, you still have hurting people. So just be wise, be considerate, be in prayer, and don't just come to your own conclusions and then look for people who think like you to validate you, or for people who, uh, or for parts of the scriptures to validate your, your your own stupid opinion. Have an open mind. Um, and what I mean by your own stupid opinion is sometimes we think because we think this way, that's the right way to think. Let me give you an example. Let's say, oh, I'm a Republican, um, and... I love Trump. Therefore, it's stupid for anybody. It's anybody who doesn't love Trump like I love Trump is stupid. That's just an example. Now, I'm, I'm not taking sides on any of that. I'm just saying, well, different people. So, uh, 